When I was growing up, Harry Potter was a big part of my life. I was just about the right age for the movies and I saw all of them post Goblet of Fire in the cinema the night they were released. Reading the books was admittedly a later thing for me, probably around my late teens, but my love for Harry Potter was present all throughout my life and very much to this day. I know it's not typically something that guys like, but sod off, let me enjoy things. One of my favourite characters, and to this day my go-to when talking about Harry Potter characters, is Daphne Greengrass. What? Who? Yeah, I know, she's not one of the most known characters. Allow me to enlighten you. Daphne is a pure blood Slytherin student with long blonde hair and bluish green eyes. She has an uptight personality that's led to her being nicknamed the Ice Queen by other Hogwarts students. She also has Tracy Davis as a best friend and allegedly some connection to the Dark Arts, though that's unconfirmed. So, how many times did she appear in the films? Well, zero, actually. Um, but that's fine, the Harry Potter films are known for how much stuff they had to shave off from the books when transitioning onto the big screen. So clearly then, Daphne must be another case product of J.K. Rowling going back on her word and then adding something into previously established canon. Daphne's just what, the wizards defecating in hallways equivalent of background characters? Yes, that's a real thing that J.K. Rowling actually said. Well, shockingly, no. In fact, as far as Daphne's in-canon appearances go, with everything from the books, the films, to Pottermore, to even stuff that J.K. Rowling herself has said, Daphne is only ever referenced, not seen, she's only ever referenced an entirety, and this was a shock to me as well, once. It was in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, chapter 31, page 628, where she's seen taking a practical exam with Hermione, Goyle, and Anthony Goldstein. I haven't heard of him either. Apparently he's Jewish. Good for him. And that's it! The Scar supplemental material we have about her is very rare and is actually just stuff that we've been able to gather from other characters. We do know that she's probably a pureblood, because in the Deathly Hallows epilogue we see that Malfoy has married Astoria Greengrass and their son is described as being a pureblood. Spoiler alert for Cursed Child now, Daphne might also be the last Greengrass if you consider Astoria's death in that as canon, which frankly I'll go to my death before I consider that play canon. And so after all that, the only other information I could actually find about her was in the BBC documentary in 2001 called Harry Potter and Me, which documents JK's relation to the series, where she had a footnote where she was originally named Queenie. I guess maybe they recycled the character Star Wars style into the Fantastic Beasts films? It's an interesting concept, but not one that I'm going to talk about today. So after all that information, or rather lack of information, we're just left wondering, who is she? Where does this image of her as the Hogwarts Ice Queen come from? Why is she important? Why is it that if you mention her name to the average internet twelling Potterhead that a pretty consistent image of her shows up? Why is there fan art? Why is there cosplays? Why is it that in a 2019 poll on Reddit she was the third most shipped character with Harry? Well, that's your answer. Yes! The wonderful world of shipping, where writers take two underage characters and make them do things together. Before we go any further, I'll have to level with you guys here, I did used to be a fanfiction writer. I'm not embarrassed about that, even though I know it's a thing that a lot of people look down on. Sometimes justify, but STOP SHOWING THAT! I know, I know, I'm sorry, but you will find that for every cringy, badly writ smut fest, there's at least one decently written story out there. It's not all bad. I've always said that my only loyalty is to quality, and I'm willing to put my personal bias aside if it's in exchange for something genuinely good. It's how I got my start in writing, so if I were to deny that it happened, I'd be denying a part of myself, which, frankly, I'm not going to do. So yes, it was through reading and writing fanfiction as a kid that me and many other fans got their first introduction with Daphne Greengrass. Now, for context, there is a huge, huge amount of Harry Potter fanfiction, the most out of any genre ever, actually. It's just one of those worlds that once it's set up, you have to know more, and especially for people like me that have an incredible nostalgic attachment to Hogwarts. So I saw the name Daphne Greengrass crop up in a few stories and I got curious and decided to Google her and yeah, I found nothing. But that didn't strike me as odd back then because at this point, through what I'd read about her, I was already in love with the character. I wasn't making those numbers up earlier by the way, Daphne really was the third most shipped character with Harry on a poll. Which is a bit weird considering that she comes in before actual canon characters like Fleur Delica and Cho Chang. So the next big question then is, why is Daphne, this future sister-in-law of a Death Eater, and to a lesser extent a girl that he's never even spoken to, ship so much with him? I mean, the idea of it is intriguing, sure. A forbidden romance in the halls of Hogwarts. The drama, the scandal, the conflict pretty much writes itself. 
Harry is often used as a vessel for self-insert, so if this kind of drama would appeal to you, then stories like that would be right up your diagon alley. Or I thought so, and clearly others did too. And that's where Daphne's popularity comes from. Now, something very true about the fanfiction community is no one likes to read OCs, or original characters. Good for you if you can come up with your own character, write a beautifully written backstory, and then weave it all together with fantastic writing. But no matter how good it is, it just won't be as popular as stories with actually canon established characters in. It is a shame, since using canon only characters can put a cap on creativity, but at the end of the day, people come to fanfiction to see more of the characters that they love. But that's where Daphne breaks the mould, she creates an exception to the rule. The few elements that had been set up about her were interesting, but outside from that, authors had a completely blank slate to work with. Why create an OC that no one's going to care about when you can just use the one that canon has already provided for you? Doesn't that sound like a ridiculously easy and surefire way to get hundreds of views on your story? That's exactly what it is. Daphne and other characters like her end up creating a loophole in the stigma against OC characters. Probably why writers like using her so much. Fans took a one-off line of exposition, not even dialogue, and boy did they run with it. Now the oldest Harry Daphne shipping material I could find was called Veritaserum Surprise, Daphne's Trial by Twisted Parody in 2006. Whether or not this is truly the first one or not, I don't know. There might have been an older one that was just deleted or was taken down, or maybe there's an even older story on a website that I don't use. I don't know. What's interesting about this story is it uses elements of the Daphne that we come to know, but that's just it. Elements. I want to make it clear, this array and Amazon image of Daphne didn't just come from one single story. This author was just one of the first to recognise the story potential in her, and as time went on and more and more people got involved and more and more stories were written about her, certain elements were cherry-picked from the rest and those become what we now associate with her. This stuff combined with the canon information that we already had, and Daphne was well on her way to becoming a fully fleshed out character in the collective consciousness. There's a post I found on Reddit asking about the origins of Daphne's fandom persona, and I found a comment there explains it better than I ever could. It's a natural projection of a stereotype. Things we can assume about Daphne from the seven books only is... Pure blood in Slytherin, so raised in a haughty noble or is at least able to survive among them. Slytherin house traits, personal ambition at the very least, self-centred worldview and questionable morality aren't unreasonable. Quiet, she sees almost no screen time in six Hogwarts years in spite of being in Harry's year, contrast that with Pansy. Reconciling all of those things with an Ice Queen stereotype is fairly simple. On top of that, melting the Ice Queen is a common enough male fantasy and is an easy way for authors to generate teenage drama without a whole lot of effort. Makes for a bland story, but both writers and readers seem to enjoy it. Cheers for that, Dan Scribe, you really hit the nail on the head. I'll link the full Reddit post in the description because there are actually some interesting comments and discussions going on there. Melting the Ice Queen is a familiar trope in romance, and searching it on TV tropes gives us this extract. She is the Ice Queen, cool, reserved, and giving nothing away. She may want love as ardently as anyone, but she masks her soft heart behind a wall of ice. It is up to someone else, typically her love interest, to soften her cold demeanour and win her love. And if that doesn't perfectly sum up the persona that fans and authors have projected onto Daphne, then I don't know what will. Of course, it does have to be said, this kind of character in real life would be toxic. But something all audiences have in common is characters that we love to hate. It's not even that far of a jump to relate Daphne's Ice Queen persona with the Sundere trope in Japan, and that's been popular since the 70s. It just works. Daphne's whole character exists because of this shared agreement between fans and authors about the qualities that are fun to read about. She's what's called a headcanon, which literally means a fan's personal idiosyncratical interpretation of canon. Don't get me wrong though, everyone has their own headcanons, and this version of Daphne is by no means everyone's version of her. In fact, when the ship began to skyrocket, a lot of authors got tired of that portrayal of her fairly quickly, and so started writing intentionally diverse stories of her. Duality was one of my personal favourites, and that one portrays her as a narcotic-using rebellious girl from Russia. Yeah, I'll link that one below. But despite these genuinely amazing alternate interpretation of her, it is by far the halty tolty array and image of her that's remained the most popular over the years. And yeah, okay, elephant in the room time, I am aware that this version of her is pretty much just a gender bent version of Draco Malfoy. But this can just come in handy for a number of reasons. Say if you don't like slash ships, or if you just don't like Draco Malfoy as a character, then you have your self-alternative. I definitely don't think that people view Daphne as a gender-bent version of Draco, but the comparison is there. When it came to write my fanfiction, Living Dangerously, which is still online, I will be linking below, because I'm brave, 
I tried intentionally to write the idealised version of Daphne, the blonde hair, blue eyed ice queen, Tracy Davis as a sidekick and a vague affiliation to the dark arts. I wanted to take the done to death aspects of Daphne and try and portray them realistically, which then just created a very toxic character who slowly humanised over the course of the story, with Harry being the key to that. When it comes to my taste in media, I believe that character should be above all else. Probably why I consider Avatar Lost Airbender to be the greatest TV show of all time, but I could do a full series all just about that. My point being, when I was a kid and writing my fanfiction, it felt like I was writing for an already established character. Whether that puts a hindrance on creative potential, or just stands as a shining symbol of what fans are capable of, that's up for the reader or the writer to decide. All I can say is I personally enjoy writing such a fan favourite character, and that headcan of her remains as one of my favourite characters in the series to this day. Though I don't write as much of it as I used to, I have nothing but fond memories from my time on fanfiction.net. The idea of canon only exists to each of us as we perceive it. Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and Star Wars, these aren't things that actually do exist. None of it's canon. Those world and characters only exist as we, the individual, the reader, perceive them to. An example, if you're in a desert and you see a mirage, the difference there is you know what's real and what isn't real. But now imagine that the desert that you're seeing is in a dream. What's then the difference between the desert and the mirage? Reality only exists how the individual perceives it to. This headcanon of Daphne Greengrass is my favourite character, and the fact that she isn't technically canon doesn't make her exist less than any of the other characters do. That aspect is irrelevant, because canon that exists in fictional media has no relevance in the real world. It's all just going on in our heads anyway. Bit meta there, I know, sorry, it's just something that's been on my mind for a bit. So now, just a few last words that I know I need to mention, because people will go sick of me in the comments if I don't mention it. It's a common belief that Daphne does actually have a film appearance, and that this character is her in The Order of the Phoenix, and I was already fairly certain that it wasn't, but after double-checking online, nowhere is this actor actually credited as playing Daphne. I think the only reason for that rumour is the fact that the actor has a passing resemblance to the fandom's interpretation of her, but it is fanfiction, so if you want us to be Daphne, then go ahead. So I hope you enjoyed this strange delve into Harry Potter and fanfiction community as a whole. It's not something I ever thought I'd be making a YouTube video about, nor was even actually the intention when I started writing the script for this video. And last, I'd like to give a huge thanks to Harry Potter fanfiction Reddit. They were all massive helps for me writing this video, and this is all for them. Subscribe if you'd like to see other strange delves into niche communities and other general oddities that I come across. This channel doesn't really have a theming other than things that I personally find quite interesting, and who knows, maybe you will too. Slytherin girl with long blonde hair, greenish brown root. I was gonna say, she, she's a long blonde Slytherin girl. But this is where Daphne breaks the mood!